Welcome back to Mr. Gard's Maths class. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at probability. So we're moving on from the statistics section and we're now focusing on probability. So probability is the likelihood of an event happening compared to another event. It's going to be a little bit of writing for you today, so I would really encourage you to copy down, especially this section called keywords and the examples that I'm going, or the explanations for each of the key words. So make sure you record this, as it will be important, given there are a bunch of new terms that you're going to need to learn. We're going to make our way through them now. So the first one is the experiment or the trial. So this is a situation where something is happening. So it might be a coin toss or it might be rolling a dice, or it could be spinning a spinner. So we're going to record that as simply the test. Okay, so it's sort of just explaining, you know, maybe we're looking for a certain result. The outcome is the possible result of the experiment. So we can record that as the experiment result. An example might be if you're flipping a coin at the start of a sporting match, you might be after heads or tails. Or if you're playing you know, a certain game, maybe the aim is to roll a six on a die. That would be the outcome that you're after. The event is the outcome. So the event is what you get. So... You could have a single outcome might be to flip a head or you, know, you need an even number when you're rolling a dice or you need two equal numbers, so two fours or two threes to get out of jail in Monopoly. The probability one is where it becomes a little bit more complicated. All probabilities range from zero up to one where zero is it is an impossible chance of rolling you know you can't roll a seven with one dice or the probability of rolling a number six or smaller on a regular dice is a hundred percent you are going to roll something smaller than seven if we were to multiply that number by 100, it would become a percentage. So an example of heads and tails, the percent or the chance of flipping a head is 0 0.5 times that by 100 will give you 50%. The way we show this mathematically is we write down PR, usually a capital P for probability of an event, so the outcome that you are after, or the, so it could be, you know, flipping ahead. The top one becomes the number of outcomes where the event occurs, and then we're going to divide that by the total number of outcomes. That may sound a little bit wordy, and it is, but as soon as we do a couple of examples, you will see that it's not really that difficult. I'll just talk you through one. So if we are looking at what are the chances of me rolling a two with a dice or one die, the probability of the event is equal to the number of outcomes where the event occurs. So how many chances are there where there's a two on the die? is obviously one, divided by the total number of outcomes. And so the total number of outcomes possible from rolling a dice is six. So there is one chance out of six. And then you can use, and you can convert that to a decimal. We'll do some examples a little bit later, but it's as simple as that. The next part that we need to know is the sample space. The sample space is simply all of the different options that 
could come about. So if I was doing a coin flip, the possible outcomes are a head and a tail. Uh, rolling a die, it's a one, a two, a three, a four, a five, a six. Obviously, if you were to have two die and you are adding up your scores, you could have anything from two up to 12. And another common one that we look at in probability is sometimes with cards. And so we'll look at uh, the number of cards in a minute or in another lesson. But it's important to, uh, it's important life skill really just to know how many cards there are in a deck of cards, for example. And finally, the complement. It's not a, you know, you're looking very good today. The complement means the complement to the probability of what you are trying to find. So when we had a look at the probability of finding a, or of rolling a two, it was one in six. The complement to that is all of the other options. So there were five other possibilities that I could have rolled. And so the complement to that would have been five six. In other words, we will write it down like this. So the probability, so we'll write that as probability of an event. So that might be of rolling a two, plus the way we sometimes write the, um, the complement is the probability of the event with a little dash up there. That means the, uh, the, the complement. So by combining those two probabilities, it equals one because it's a 100% chance of either rolling, in this case, we were talking about rolling a two and the complement to rolling a two is rolling a one, three, four, five, and six. So you have a 100% chance of rolling a two or a one, three, four, five, six. So I've just got a little thing we call a spinner. So sometimes you'll see these when you're doing some probability activities. So I've given a little question. Down here. So the probability of spinning a green segment, assuming each segment is the same size. We're going to use this formula up here that hopefully you have written down nice and neatly. And it says the probability of an event, and in this case, the probability of spinning green is equal to the number of outcomes where the event occurs. So how many times or how many possibilities are there to spin a green? I'm sure you can see that there are two green segments. So there are two possibilities of spinning a green divided by the total number of outcomes. So there are eight different sort of answers or eight different results that the little spinner, this arrow, could be spun onto. So it's a bit of a, they're easy little tools to have in a maths classroom where you spin that around and it will point in a direction. So we can simplify that to one fourth if we divide both top and bottom by two to make it simpler. So there is a one in four chance or a 0 0.25. 0 .25 probability of spinning a green. The complement to spinning a green is then going to be all of the other results. So there are six out of eight other possibilities, which is three quarters or 0 0.75. Remembering that when you add those two together, you will always get an answer of one. Now what you'll see is I've put out an image of a deck of cards. Now, as I mentioned earlier, 
knowing what cards there are is quite important for math, at least in the probability at the stage that you guys are working through. It's important to note that cards range from an ace, which often represents one, that's on the left hand side, two, three, four, all the way up to ten, and then you have jack, queen, and king. These are commonly referred to as picture cards. You also have spades, hearts, diamonds, and clubs. Again, important to recognise the difference between them. You also have half of the cards are what we call red and half of them are black. Now you'll commonly come across some questions, so I'll put some up. You might get something that says the probability of picking a picture card. Now in this case, we've got to work out firstly how many picture cards there are. So in this case, there's three spades, three hearts, three diamonds and three clubs. So there's 12 picture cards in total divided by the total number of cards in the deck, which is 52. Now, if you have a deck of cards at home, sometimes you'll find that in Joker. We don't commonly include Jokers in a deck of cards. So we have a chance of, of picking a picture card is 12 in 52, which we can simplify if we divide top and bottom by four. So we get three, 13, like so, and then that is our probability. Now you can work that out as a decimal just by doing it on your computer, or you can work it out mathematically. The complement is therefore 10 out of 13, because the odds of getting a non-picture card is 10 thirteenths. You'll find that you have other questions that might say, what is the chance of getting a even numbered red card? In which case, count them. we've got one, two, three, four, five, assuming we're not counting the pictures. And there are 10 even numbered red cards out of 52. And again, simplify them. This has been a pretty long lesson, but an important one with some important concepts to get your head around. You need to understand this stuff in order to do the next few lessons. So make sure you've written out how to determine the probability. And if you can do that, you should be all good for the next few lessons. Thanks for listening.